What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to design a top app bar as shown in material design guidelines. If you're not familiar with Google's material design guidelines, I highly recommend going to their site, which I've linked in the description below. There you can see about things like usage, principles, types of top app bars, anatomy, spacing, and so on. Today I'm going to show you how to design a regular top app bar, as well as an extended one, with both the typical purple that you see here, as well as what it looks like when you add an image rather than a colored flat background. A quick note on usage, you want to be using top app bars to show content and actions for the current screen. It will often contain the branding or screen titles, and you can transform it into a contextual action bar. An example of this is when maybe you're editing or removing photos, the title of that page would turn into the action associated with whatever you're doing. Let's first design a regular top app bar. The first thing I'm going to do is create a frame. I'm going to set this to the typical iPhone width, which is 375 pixels wide. We're going to set this to be 56 pixels high. I'm going to change this background color from the white to the purple that we use in the title of this video. From there, I'm going to create a new text layer. I'm going to call this bars. And you can see I'm set to font awesome pro, which is a font that turns certain words into icons. I'm going to change the width of this to 24 pixels. And then I'm going to have this be 16 pixels from the top and bottom. I'm also going to add a share nodes icon, a search icon, and an ellipsis. You'll notice that this is horizontal, not vertical. So I'll change this to say vertical. And then you'll notice that this is much narrower than these two. So I'm gonna set this to 12 pixels. I'll take all of these, apply auto layout, change the spacing between elements to 24 pixels. And then I'm going to right align this. I'm gonna have it be 16 pixels from the side, right align that. It'll be positioned from the top. We'll left align this, position from the top. And the last thing that we need to add is page title. Type page title here. I'm going to change this to be SF Pro. Font is a little bit big. So I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to increase the weight to medium. Reduce the letter spacing a bit here. And then I'm supposed to have 32 pixels of spacing here. Right now I have 13. That. Center it. Let's change the width of this container so it can pick up as much space between elements as it possibly can. I'll left align it. I'm going to name this regular. Now that we have this, I'm going to go over to the extended top app bar and design that. Here we have the regular one. I'll keep this down here. Take this. We'll call it extended. And then you can see this is actually 128 pixels high rather than 56. So what I'm going to do is go here and change this to 128. All of these elements you'll notice have stayed in the same place, but this one moves down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the sizing of this text here to be 24 pixels high. Change this to be 30. And then I'm going to move this to be 24 pixels from the bottom. Let's actually take a rectangle here. We'll make this 28 pixels high. And what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that the base height of this text actually aligns with the, this gray box. So I'm going to move this down two pixels. Remove that. We'll keep this aligned to the bottom. And then I have this extended bar here. You might be wondering why I would use an extended top bar rather than a standard one. And the reason is pretty simple. It's because you might want to have a longer title here. So let's say your page title goes here. You can support a lot more text than you would in this small area. Another reason is to use this area to show off the brand or imagery. So let's look at what this would feel like if we added an image into this top bar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take both of these. And I'm going to go to Unsplash. I'm going to search for a texture here. I like this black brush texture. So I'm going to copy this, select this extended layer. I'm going to move this to the back, size it down rotate it. I'm actually going to switch this line to be vertical. Now you've got a nice image that you can use as the background rather than a flat color. If you use an image that has more color in it, or more pattern or texture, you might need to add a linear gradient from the top to make sure elements are readable. Or you may want to think about using a different image so that your text and icons are legible, as that's the most important thing. I'm going to take all of these. Make sure that they're evenly spaced from each other. And then I'm going to click this drop down, create a component set. I'm going to call this top bar. I'm going to change this property to be type. And then if I take this, I can go to extended or I can go to regular. You can see I can't toggle this image off and on. So I'll select this top bar, 
select plus, create a new variant property. We'll call this image. We'll set the default value to false. And if I create that property, you'll see that all of these have that property of false. If I set this to true, that means that this component does have an image background. If I pull this out here, you'll see now I have the option to make this a regular or an extended top bar and I can toggle the image on and off. Now let's see what this looks like in context. I'm gonna create a frame. I'm gonna make it 375 by 812, which is the size of a typical iPhone. Call this iPhone. Paste this up here. I can see I can swap this to the image or no image, whether or not. Change the name to iPad. I'm gonna set this width to be 768. The component scales accordingly, and this is true of the image as well. One thing to note, if you're having trouble with the image not scaling to fit, what you might need to do is click into here and make sure that the constraints are set to scale rather than center or left. And that's it. You now know how to create a top app bar design in accordance with Google's material design guidance. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of how top app bars work and more importantly, how to design them for your next project. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.